Joining me now, John Bremick, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Always good to be with you, John. Thanks for joining us. Always good to be with you, Roby. Let's begin with, uh, we have a primary that's a little over a week away in Arkansas. There'll be some scattered legislative primaries that um, might be of modern interest. The big uh, uh, primary up in the 3rd Congressional District between Steve Womack, Clint Penzo, be one we're watching. But uh, the major issue or major race will be the Chief Justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court. Four candidates there. Kind of how do you see that playing out? Do you want to make a prediction? What are some of the dynamics of that race? Well, first dynamic is three sitting associate justices of the seven member Supreme Court, all in the middle of their terms, are uh, with the insurance of being able to stay in those seats if they lose, are choosing to go for the office of Chief Justice. It's odd. It's probably not the best kind of situation. It leads me to th consider the whole judicial uh, political uh, dynamic to be one of uh, insiderism, that you've got an advantage if you're already on there, which you do. Uh, and then they're running for chief justice because the chief justice, uh, Dan Kemp, ran into this circumstance of being past his 70th birthday when his term was up and he had to either decide to retire or forfeit judicial retirement which is not a thing many people could afford to do. You don't do that with journalists, isn't it? As I put in the paper the other day, I support that except uh, in the case of journalists. And, and I support generational change except in the case of columnists. That's, uh, uh, <laughs> th there's, always, uh, there's always personal uh, exceptions. Uh, two, of, two of the, th of the four, uh, uh, two of the three associate justices uh, are known Republicans arising from Republican politics, uh, Barbara Webb and Rhonda Wood. Uh, Karen Baker is sort of a quiet, uh, little noticed associate justice who won a big race uh, two years ago. And then there's another candidate, Jay Martin, who has the disadvantage, is that it? Yeah, has the disadvantage of not having judged before his name. <clears throat> if nobody gets over 50%, this goes to a long range runoff so that's where it all is, and it's odd, and I wish we didn't let these people run in the middle of their terms, and I wish we didn't force these judges uh, to, uh, to, to, to retire past 70. Uh, yeah, the, way, the best way to handicap it is that Barbara Webb is the wife of longtime state Republican Party Chairman Doyle Webb, got a lot of Republican contacts. It's a Republican state. I would think she would lead the ticket, and uh, that's uh, about as how much you'll lead it by and whether she could possibly get 50% plus one in a four-person race, I'm not going to say. But, uh, you know, that's uh, it's, it's not a bad bet to bet on the best-known Republican in, a, in an Arkansas political race at the current time. All right, we'll watch and see how that plays out. Let's talk about some of the uh, potential constitutional amendments that could be on the November ballot. These are the ones that have cleared, I'm gonna reference a couple that have cleared the attorney general's office so they can yes. collect signatures. Um, I would say they all have a pretty decent chance of collecting enough signatures to at least try to qualify. Let's begin with the Freedom of Information Act, this um, uh, government Disclosure, Transparency, uh, Amendment, and Initiated Act. It's kind of a dual um, proposition here. What do you make of its chances should it get on the ballot? Do you think this is going to be a everybody loves government transparency? Who could possibly oppose this? There's no known or vocal opposition group. And you have a pretty bipartisan coalition of folks supporting this. You do, and they finally settled on for the constitutional amendment to the Arkansas Disclosure Amendment. They backed off of the Transparency Amendment. They could have just called it the Freedom of Information Amendment, I think, even though that was somehow complicated. Uh, that's a popular name, and it's a, and, and it's a disclosure. Who out there is against disclosure of, by their government of how the government is operating? Uh, we know there are some leading Republican politicians who have trouble problems with the Freedom of Information Act, starting with the governor and continuing to the attorney general, but whether they would actually be outspoken and trying to use their political capital to come out against 
you're having a constitutional right of disclosure to know what your city council is doing or your state legislature, legislative committees are doing or, or, or your, your boards and commissions are doing, are be able to get documents and records from your government as to what's going on. I personally doubt that they would. This may be the kind of thing you just say, well, it's going to pass, even if you think you have good arguments against it. Very strong concept. And yes, uh, Republicans, Democrats, and independents drew this thing up. They're talking about staying in business to, to do good government uh, in, in their current form uh, in, in some way. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's odds on to, to be, uh, if they get their signatures and get them all verified, to, uh, to join our, to, to be affixed to our state constitution. It is strange. There may be some confusion that there's also an initiated act because they thought they needed to go both ways to take care of all possibilities. Maybe some people might get confused. That's the only thing about it that gives me a hitch. I suspect the campaign will be just vote for amendment, whatever the number is, vote for act, whatever the number is. I, I it don't Surely. Think it's something fairly Surely. clever. Yeah. They do need to do a little education. Thing, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One that fascinates me because we've seen this in other states and I, mm -hmm. I just somehow feel like Arkansas is going to be different is the abortion yeah. uh, amendment. Mm -hmm. We've seen like states like Kansas, for example, have passed, um, a, 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 an amendment that allows for some exceptions to uh, very strict abortion laws and by overwhelming margins. And that's what this one proposes, but there will be some pretty organized opposition to this through the family council and some other um, folks that do not want to see this make the ballot. And I think that they'll have a little ammunition with some of the Arkansas voters that are pro-life that don't, that think this may go too far. What's your take on how this amendment gets uh, proposed to voters and what, how you see it playing out. Well, as long as Jerry Cox and the uh, family council have an extensive mailing list, and uh, uh, have a wide uh, influence among uh, the evangelical community, as long as they are dead set against it, uh, it's got trouble. Uh, it is more, it, it, is an, it is a right to abortion for 18 weeks, then it is exceptions after that. So I think if it was just exceptions and the opponents would have to uh, defend uh, denying abortion in cases of rape or incest or those sorts of things, that'd be a different issue and we'd have a real race on our hands. I'm not sure about this particular one, which is both an abortion authorization amendment for, uh, for, for 18 weeks with exceptions after that. And one of the exceptions, I just mentioned this, one of the exceptions is, while clearly defined, pretty clearly defined, it is for uh, protection of the health of the mother. To pro-life groups, that's a red flag. That means people. That means abortions uh, uh, freely uh, administered, just because merely on the basis of, of people finding a doctor who who will uh, allow it. It is more. It is more restricted than that. Uh, exceptions for the health of the mother does not mean absolute right of abortion uh, till uh, birth, but that is something that that uh, that the pro-life people can rally around and saying this goes too far. And uh, I think I think they'll have more money, probably. I'm not sure to make the case that let's make this about what it does to permit abortion. Not this part that that has a few perhaps thoughtful exceptions after. That's the way I see it. But I'll, I'll tell you, this whole abortion issue under the repeal of Roe v. Wade, with now in vitro fertilization perhaps illegal in the state of Alabama, this is all a, one thing that's percolating out there is swing voters thinking this all is going too far, and that we'll see if that can be a factor. In the in in the Arkansas race, that that whatever you think about an abortion, basically, is this the climate that that is reasonable? Is this the climate that we want? Whether that plays here, I don't know, but I feel that happening out there. Yeah. All right. Lastly, the uh, medical marijuana um, change. Yeah. I guess it's the, I, it it doesn't qualify it now, but it does make some changes to the existing law. It got its uh, ballot title and popular name approved, so it is going to collect signatures. I 
since again they'll probably find signatures enough to get this on the ballot um does, is this a a driver of any particular kind of voting base do you think this is a rural versus an urban issue does it how do you see it kind of playing politically my view of medical marijuana is that we have voted on that we have considered that uh, we we approved it we have it it's not bothering anybody that I know of. There are not a lot of people out there saying the world has gone to hell in Arkansas ever since we started allowing medical marijuana. And that's this, and I even think recreational marijuana, it was leading in the polls uh, two years ago until the issue became that people were trying to build themselves monopolies of it. And, and that's the reason the, the tide turned against it. I think we've sort of legislated, litigated, voted on medical marijuana. This, this adds, this makes for more flexible the ability to get medical marijuana, more than a doctor, but a pharmacist and a nurse practitioner. Uh, rather than just specified conditions, uh, the doctor can more generally uh, prescribe it. Uh, things like that. Uh, I don't think it changes it enough to change uh, or disturbs the status quo enough to uh, bother anybody because the status quo seems to be determined and set and not any particular problem. The idea that non-doctors, medical people, but not necessarily doctors, can now prescribe it without any specific illness that's listed, somebody might want to rally around that and say, this is, this is just a, a backdoor to uh, uh, marijuana for all, you know, but I don't think so. Uh, but that's the only thing I see. And you're, what you're looking for on something like this is a is a clause or a provision that can cause people to become afraid. Like, oh, well, did, what are they really up to? And that's the only kind of thing that could beat uh, this amendment, I think. And that's the only prospect for it. And uh, I don't think we'll see that. I'll say one more thing before we have to wrap this up, but I think that the family council will be opposed to that too. So you might get well, sure. some synergy of opposition to uh, in rallying voters to right. uh, vote against some of these things and getting them out to the polls. Those are in turn probably strong Republican voters uh, in the yes. poll as well. So Robert, you always come in with, sometimes you come in with an excellent. <laughs> I always sometimes come yeah. in, huh? Yeah. You, you, when you come in with something, it's always something I should have thought of myself. And thank you. All right. Good. Good to be with you, John Brummett. Thank All you. All right. Man. Next time. <laughs>